Tom, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, we know you're in town to do a talk, I guess, to the House of Kin fundraiser, but we're going to take it outside of that and look at junior hockey because mm -hmm. this is a junior hockey hotbed. You have a background in junior hockey. That's where you got your start. Do you still sort of have a love affair with the game? Oh yeah, it's you know I have a love affair with my minor hockey coaches and, and those those times too. To be honest with you, hockey's a it's been a lifetime uh, marriage for me for sure, and certainly junior hockey had an awful lot to do with. Um, where I've ended up, I suppose, um, thanks to a, a great league, a great team, and, and um, you know, a, a real, real well-run, well-intentioned uh, league from coast to coast. Does that sort of set the bar in terms of where you want junior hockey to be? Is the CHL executing? I think so. I mean, we can always get better. Uh, hockey Canada in general is no different. There's a lot of things that we need to, to look at and, and improve upon for sure. I think the game in general can always look at that. Um, the CHL does that as well as anybody and more often probably than most, uh, quite honestly. So for me, I like the fact that they operate every single day with a clear conscience, uh, you know, with, with one thing in mind, and that's making the experience special for the players. And there's a real partnership between the two organizations. I mean, obviously the World Juniors being the, the primary factor, but is there a lot more that goes on behind the scenes than just that one event? There is, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that we that we work on uh, on a daily basis, uh, you know, between the Hockey Canada and the CHL. Uh, part of them is our uh, player identification programs. The under 16 program all the way through under 20 is something that's certainly alive and well through the relationship between Hockey Canada and CHL. Um, beyond that, there's the uh, CCES, the Center for uh, Canadian Centre of uh, Ethics and Sport and the doping control uh, situation that is incumbent with every national team um, you know across uh, around the world for that matter and so we pay particular attention to that pool of players uh, which by and large comes from the CHL uh, so there's a lot of things that are going on on a daily basis that involve that relationship. Right now we've got the U18 tournament happening across seas that's just part of the program of excellence how important is it for Hockey Canada to stay involved with these kids as they develop? Huge. It's huge. Um, you know, we have to make sure, first of all, that, and the program of excellence starts when the little guy or girl steps on the ice for the first time. And I'm not talking about high performance hockey, I'm talking about high performance people. And at the end of the day, um, you know, as they, as they sort of wind their way through that whole experience, uh, the under 20, I guess, is the epitome of all of that. Um, you know, so we have to make sure that the hockey experience from cradle to grave has been something that's been very, very special to them, whereby somewhere in that whole lineage, uh, under 17, under 18, and under 20 get the opportunity to do their thing on behalf of their country. Is it hard to get the attention away from the under 20 event being the marquee event of the year, I would think? I suppose so. Um, you know, if we, I think the under 17 event is, uh, you know, that we hold every uh, fall is, is, is popular, uh, as it was last year in Sarnia. Um, but the under 20 event is, seems to be the Cadillac. And, uh, and rightfully so, that's where our sponsors put an awful lot of their time and money in as well. Uh, but with that being said, I, I think that, um, you know, should you see more of an under 18 opportunity uh, in Canada, and maybe even in the U.S., for example, you may see a little bit more interest that way. Uh, the bottom line is that the under 20 program and the program of excellence in general really helps sort of set the template around the world, really, for how high performance hockey can be both appreciated by the sponsor and the fan. Well, and this year, I mean, with it being in two non-traditional hockey markets with Montreal and Toronto, but still getting the attendance there, I mean, there was there was some critique of that, but when you look at where it goes overseas and the arenas are 6,000 people, and here you've got 20,000 seat arenas, I think that just speaks to how important it has to be for this organization. Absolutely. It's, it's important for the fabric of our country, quite honestly. It's become a tradition, you know, the under-20 uh, tournament in Canada every second year. Uh, it's one of those things that people identify with, uh, you know, both domestically, of course, but even abroad. And you mentioned the 6,000 seat arenas in Europe, which is right. Um, the problem with that is that there's 1,500 people in those 6,000 seat arenas where we might have 13 or 14,000, you know, at the Bell Centre in Montreal, and I think I know where I'd rather put my time. Um, now, in terms of, of growing junior hockey, when, when you get that kind of reaction for one event, do you think it can get bigger? I don't know if it can get bigger. I think it can get better. Okay. Um, there's always room to improve on that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the fan has to make the choice. You know, the, the, the person that's paying for the ticket has to make the choice uh, as to whether or not they want to participate. So um, we have an obligation because of that to make sure people get value for their money. Uh, we believe that we've delivered on that. We believe that we have to continue to do that and really raise the bar. Um, at the end of the day, if, if we can do that on a, you know, on a regular basis, I, I think we'll fill rinks um, in perpetuity. You know, if we have that event every second year, I think we'll do a good job of making sure that Canadians uh, get an opportunity to be a part of it.
You don't think it would become too watered down if it's permanently every two years in Canada? I don't think so. I think by the time you go through a cycle of that, and that would include some of your other centers that maybe aren't the 15, 18, uh, thousand seat arenas. It might be that eight or ten thousand seat junior rink, or that four or six thousand seat junior rink, um, over a number of different venues in a, in a little tighter geographic, if you will. Um, at the end of the day, um, you know the aggregate number is what imp what is what is important, and and we believe we can do that. I mean, hockey is is vital to Canadians. People love it, and uh, you know that has become a real tradition at Christmas time, whereby people come and uh, they pay attention to it, no matter where they are, if they're even outside of the country. Uh, I've had friends tell me that they've been in very warm climates, uh, if you will, this past Christmas watching uh, the World Junior Championship. Was it tough to have the, for lack of a better word, controversy in your first year of, of where the tournament was held? No, no. I, I've, I've dealt with tougher things than that, to, to be honest with you. I've, uh, I've weathered more storms than this. And, and the bottom line is people care. And I love that. Um, you know, my, my, the, the tougher issue for me is making sure that kids play hockey and they play it for a long time. What have been the underlying issues from your first year? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there, there seems to have been an awful lot said, written and, and spoken about, um, you know, getting kids in hockey and kids are choosing to do other things besides stay active, never mind hockey. Uh, you know, so for me, I think that's one of them, making sure that um, as Hockey Canada, as those that are in the game from a volunteer perspective, all the way through those that uh, do it for a living and get paid for it, uh, I think we need to yell a little louder on how well we're doing with respect to growing good Canadian kids. Uh, through the game of hockey and, and selling the values and the ethics that go along with team sport and in this case the most important and um, the best sport in the world and that's that's hockey to me that that is the number one issue for me and coming out of the nhl um, i think it would have been easy to just clamor all over high performance and all the stuff that everyone loves and the sort of has the sex appeal to it um, my personal mandate is to make sure that we get boys and girls playing hockey and that they are so committed to it and love it so much that they in fact play it for a lifetime because I think when people think Hockey Canada, they instinctively go to the high performance. Mm -hmm. But you want to make it about more than that? Absolutely, 100%. We don't have, have high performance if we don't have kids playing. We don't have kids playing if we don't have coaches certified. Uh, we don't have coaches certified in, in, in coaching the game if we don't have officials certified and trained to coach the game. Um, we don't have the game if we don't have our respect and sport component to our coaching um, uh, education, if you will. Um, you know, So many of the things that we do, we do really, really well. And uh, I think we've got to stand up and make sure the rest of the world knows that. So when you look at your background to set you up for this position, where does the junior hockey sort of fit into that to help? Well, it helps a lot because I had the good fortune of being with a very good organization. I had a great team and won a Memorial Cup. So that was a bit of a springboard. But you have to think and ask yourself why. You know, why, why did that happen? Uh, you know, and it happened because of a deep commitment by a fan base uh, you know, in Kamloops, a deep commitment by a general manager, a deep commitment by a coaching staff. Uh, a deep commitment by all staff, quite honestly, at that point in time, and a deep, deep commitment um, from the CHL and the Western Hockey League at that time to make sure they took care of their athletes enough so that they wanted to come to a place like Kamloops. So, you know, after the Equal Sign Memorial Cup, it's great, uh, and it's a springboard for lots of things. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself why. And why you wanted to get involved with Hockey Canada is my final thought. Why did you want to make that jump? For so many years it was coaching and it was the NHL and now you're in offices and yeah. probably not spending too much time in rinks or maybe not as much in time as not, not enough. Um, <laughs> it's, you get a job like this, it seems like the last place you get to is a rink, um, which is problematic for me because I love it there. But uh, you know, that's a great question and that's one that most people ask me. And I, um, you know, I, I enjoyed coaching and, and still do, without a doubt, but that said, I, I think that um, there's a point in time where you look at yourself and you just say, oh, how much runway have I got left to really do something special? And uh, in as much as we all identify with um, world championships and gold medals and Stanley Cups, um, you know, for me, I'm a little bit more philanthropic than that, probably always have been. And, um, you know, I want to make sure that whatever my legacy is in the game sort of reflects more on uh, what I did to help grow it. I like that. Good luck with it. Thank you. And thank you so much for taking the time. Pleasure.